we'll begin our discussion on uh, reinforcement learning with uh, the topic Markov decision process. And we first take up a motivating example, which is chess. So in chess, we have a player and the player makes a move. The move can be a pawn being moved forward, a knight being moved left forward, and taking the opponent with the queen, and so on. So these are the possible moves of the player. And as a result of the move, the state of the board changes. The board is referred to as the environment here, and the player is an agent. And uh, so there is a state transition in the board. So the pawn could be uh, two squares forward, the knight could be in a new square, or the opponent's bishop uh, would be missing, and uh, the queen would be in its place, and so on. So these are the possible state transitions. Uh, the state is the the sort of uh, like it can be all possible board positions. Uh, there are so many of them. So that's a state transition. As a response to the player's move, the new board state, the new configuration of the board uh, returns a reward back to the player. And uh, so the reward is positive when it's a good move and the reward is negative when it's a bad move. So what is a reward? Uh, the reward is a signal, that's a scalar signal. And uh, so uh, examples would be if the pawn, uh, moving the pawn forward exposed the player's own king to the opponent's uh, piece, then the reward is negative, let's say negative 15. On the other hand, if uh, moving the knight uh, checkmates the opponent, the opponent loses, then the reward is plus 100. If the opponent loses a bishop, then the reward is plus 10, and so on. Now, what's the goal of a player? Uh, the goal cannot be to immediately make the best possible move. Uh, just because uh, it seems like a good move right away, when uh, three steps further, the player would uh, probably lose the game. That's not a good reward. On the other hand, the player cannot anticipate 20 uh, moves ahead because of the lack of uh, uh, certainty. So the player aims to maximize the following. It aims to maximize the reward, or more specifically, the immediate reward that it would get in this move, times, sorry, excuse me, plus 0 0.9 times expected reward in the next move, plus 0 0.9 squared times expected reward after two moves, plus 0 0.9 cubed times expected rewards after three moves. So the further ahead in time, we discount the expected reward by a smaller and smaller factor. 0 0.9 when it's one step into the future, 0 0.9 squared when it's two steps into the future, 0 0.9 cubed when it's three steps in the future, and so on. Why do we do so? Because of the uncertainty in the reward. The further away in time, the less certain is the reward. That's why we discount the reward. And 0 0.9 is called the discount factor. So now let's move on to the formal definition of a Markov decision process. Episodic setting, by that we uh, mean step by step, time, uh, time, discrete time iterations. So the initial state is ST, the state of the environment, and the set of all possible states is this S. And S subscript T is the state of the environment at time step T. That's in the episodic set setting, we will have time step as a subscript. 
A, uppercase A, this A here, is the set of all possible actions available with the agent. And at time step T, the action taken is A sub T. That's one of the elements of this set of actions. And so this is the action taken by the agent upon the environment. As a result of this action, the environment transitions to a new state. It was in state ST and then it transitioned to state ST plus one due to this action AT. And so this is how we denote this transition. ST, then arrow, and we have AT above the arrow uh, pointing to S sub T plus 1. So that is the transition of the environment from time step T to uh, the new state at time step T plus 1. And the transition in chess is deterministic, but in other games, uh, like in uh, stochastic games, the transition will be probabilistic. Let's say the player is playing golf instead of chess. Then it's a probabilistic uh, move. Uh, so depending on the action, depending on the shot that the golfer takes, the ball position would be determining ST plus one, but that would also depend on other factors like uh, uh, wind and uh, the grass conditions and so on. And so uh, we have a transition probability. So the transition probability is P, ST, AT, ST plus one. Present state, action taken, and next state. And this is the probability of going to the next state given current state ST and action taken AT. And this is the Markov property. So what exactly is the Markov property? The Markov property means that the transition probability depends only on the current state and the current action taken at time step t. It does not depend on what the previous states were and the previous actions were. So s t minus 1, a t minus 2, s t minus uh, 3, a t minus 3, and so on, this probability does not depend on that. It only depends on the present circumstances and uh, and the action uh, taken. And so it's memoryless. So that's why it's called a Markov property. And then at the same time step T, before the environment has completed its transition to the new state, so we are still looking at time step T, the agent receives a immediate reward or reinforcement signal and this uh, reward signal uh, rt is a function r of the current state and the current action taken at time step t so rt is a function of st comma at and then we are now in the next time step, t plus 1. So this is time step t plus 1, and this is initially, before the agent acts upon the environment, this is the state of the environment at time t plus 1. And then the agent makes an action a sub t plus 1 at time step t plus 1, which is applied to the environment. And we proceed likewise for the rest of the uh, game. The discounted reward. So this sequence is called the SARSA sequence here. State at time t, action at time t, reward at time t. This is the immediate reward. And then state at time t plus 1 and action at time t plus 1. It's the SARSA sequence. And uh, in some textbook, please note that it's assumed that the reward signal is given at time step t plus 1. So the transition occurs right here. But I will assume 
that this is the point at which the time changes from t to t plus 1. And the reward sequence is rt, rt plus 1, which would be right here, would be rt plus 1, then subsequently rt plus 2, rt plus 3, and so on. And we will assume that this game goes on until infinity. So the discounted total future reward starting at time t is given by this. Now, this is the immediate reward. In fact, lowercase r will refer to the immediate reward, and uppercase r will refer to the immediate reward plus discounted future rewards, which is all the other terms here. So this is the immediate reward rt. This is gamma, is the discount factor times the expected reward in the next time step plus gamma squared times expected reward at time step t plus 2. I'm using the word expected for all future rewards because of the lack of certainty. And this is what the agent will try to maximize. Now, if I take gamma common here, so I take gamma outside, and so this is one gamma, so gamma rt plus 1, this gamma square rt plus 2 now becomes gamma rt plus 2, and gamma square rt plus 3, gamma cubed rt plus 4, and so on. So let's take a look at what's this inside. Pretend it's time step t plus 1. This is the immediate reward. This is the reward after one time step now, because we're looking at time step t plus 1. So t plus 2 is the next time step. And that's discounted by this factor gamma here. After two time steps, we have the discount gamma squared. After three time steps, we have a discount of gamma cubed. And so this, actually, inside this parenthesis, this factor is equal to the immediate reward plus expected future reward at time step t plus 1. That would be the same thing as our t here, except that instead of time step t, we are looking at time step t plus 1. And so this expression becomes equal to r t plus gamma times r t plus 1. And this is a recursive relationship. And this is very important that this is the crux of uh, a reinforcement learning. So uppercase r sub t, the total reward is immediate reward plus gamma times total future reward at time t plus 1. And I highlight it because it's uh, wise to remember this expression right now. So now let's formally define what a Markov decision process is. Now I have dropped the subscript time because this is no longer an episode setting. We are looking at the definition of the Markov decision process without any time step being denoted. So the MDP is a five tuple consisting of the following. The set of states of the environment. The set of actions available with the agent. Now for simplicity, I'm assuming that all possible actions are available to the agent at any state of the environment. But that's not always true. For instance, if the player has lost a knight, then moving that nine, uh, sorry, that knight forward is no longer a, a viable action because the knight's not there. So in general, the set of actions that are available with the agent depend on the state of the environment. But we assume, just for notational simplicity, that the set of actions available with the agent remains constant throughout. And P is the straight transition probability function, which is a mapping from the current state 
the action taken and the next take. And it gives a probability of transitioning from the current state to the next state based on the action taken. And since the probability lies between 0 and 1, so this is a mapping from uh, S cross A cross S to the interval 0, 1. And the reward received by the agent is R. And that's a function of the current state and the action taken. And it maps to, this is the reward function, R, it maps to a real number. And more generally, again, for simplicity, I'm assuming that R is a function of S cross A, but more generally, it will also depend on the next state, because the next state is probabilistic. In a more general setting, the, when the uh, next state cannot be determined as in chess, um, in golf, uh, it's probabilistic. So uh, we should have to include this next state here uh, in the reward function. But again, for simplicity, I'm assuming for most of this, uh, uh, the next few lectures, I'll assume that the reward is a function of the current state and the action state. And finally, we have the discount factor, which is between 0 and 1, gamma. And when gamma is equal to 0, that means the agent is making a purely greedy move. It's doesn't, it doesn't have a vision. It doesn't have any insights into what's going to happen in the future. It simply makes the best possible, what seems to be the best possible move right now, that would gain the maximum immediate reward, but that's not always a good strategy. The end.